Welcome to Shortwave Radio, past and present. And of course, with QSL cards in my collection and my personal experience in listening to these stations. Today we look at Radio Beijing. And we'll have a little history of Radio Beijing because it's what today a lot of you know has Radio China Radio International. But it also started earlier than that as Radio Peking. So they kind of had some change and a lot of change. So Radio Beijing out of China. And uh, here we go. This is Radio Beijing. I'm Deng Jian, and here is the news. First, the headlines. In Beijing, the Second National Party School Conference has called for speeding up the training of leaders at different party organizations. So Radio Peking is when it all started. Radio Peking was founded on December 3rd, 1941. And of course, it went on, and a lot of people that listened on shortwave back in the days... And later on, got um, the Little Red Book, the Mao's um, Little Red Book. So uh, that was one of the popular things being sent over to uh, anyone corresponding with uh, Radio Peking. In the late 70s, early 80s, um, there was a transition to Radio Beijing, which went with the fact that Peking kind of uh, changed a little bit of its uh, pronunciation and name to Beijing. And, of course, the station followed with that. This is where I started listening to Radio Beijing because I was not listening when it was still Radio Peking. And it had a little change. Radio Peking was much more China-oriented and China presenters Radio Beijing, even though still retaining some Chinese presenters, was a little more fluent in English. I would say that their pronunciation started getting better. And, of course, today we have the uh, China Radio International, where you sometimes wonder if there's any Chinese people actually speaking because of their English today. So these are QSL cards that I've got back in the days. With times and frequencies, look at that, zero hours UTC, July 15th on 15520 in 1985. Hey, they sent me a keyring. I had a lot of keyrings. I think they, they sent quite a few of those back in the days. Now, you got to remember one thing is that today, China Radio International, a lot of people are complaining how uh, you know it's easy to listen to because of all the relays. Back in the day, Radio Beijing and even Radio Peking did not have relays you were receiving it direct from China, and it was a tough one. Here in the East Coast particularly, and with the radios I had, Radio Beijing was truly a DX target, and it was something that uh, you were happy to have when you received it. And, of course, lots of QSLs. I got a lot of QSLs from Radio Beijing back in the day. I got a lot of QSLs from the later China Radio International also. This one from April 19th. 1988 on 15455 at 0UT. Thank you for your comments on our programs. And here's another one. Whoops, I forgot to change this one's orientation, sorry. Uh, New China, 1949 to 1984, 35. So uh, that's kind of an interesting uh, take on uh, the changes in China. Uh, thank you for your comment on our station, D... Trying to, going to get this a little bigger. The textbook everyday sentences and phrases for tourists are being reprinted now. 
will send them to you as soon as they are available. Oh, yeah, those, those were to learn Chinese, which I never really did. This is another QSL card from uh, October 24, 1985, 15520. I remember that frequency quite fondly. Uh, thank you for your comment on our program. Enclosed are some paper cuts with a design of tigers. They had a lot of those paper cuts back then, which were uh, really nice and were always with the um, the uh, lunar calendar um, astrological uh, animal that they had. Uh, next year is the year of the tiger. So those were actually sent in advance for next year. So like I said, no relays back then. So they were difficult to get uh, here on the East Coast with the radios I had, the antennas and so on. But thanks to high solar activity, it was kind of cool. Uh, of course, Radio Beijing was much more, you know, today China Radio International gives its viewpoints based on China, but with a much more modern and, and, and almost um, Western feel to it. Back then you felt that China was China. And uh, what's interesting is uh, I don't think I don't think anyone back in uh, like 85, 1985 would have thought that um, today a guy from you know Canada making videos on YouTube would have so many radios coming out of China from Texan and so on. And did we really think in 1985 that China would be the big manufacturer of devices and of electronics today pretty uh pretty amazing when you think about it so uh i miss the days of radio beijing and because of the more china you know it felt like china like not like china radio international today which feels much more like a regular program you'd get on any channel uh, but, um, you know, the propagation back then, um, getting China was amazing. And when you got China on your shortwave radio, I mean, wow, you were happy to have China on the East Coast particularly. You know, we talk about the West Coast, East Coast thing all the time of how West Coast, maybe it's a little easier to get China and get Asian signals. So in, in the West Coast, you know, it's probably something quite easy to get, but then East Coast... When I heard the interval signal of China Radio, I mean, whoa, I was happy. And I was uh, I was really, really fond of, you know, knowing that I'm getting. And, of course, the fact that even in my teenage years, throughout the first years, it was like something fantastic to get signals from far away, uh, like China. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe. Give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.